Hi. These things. You find them everywhere, actually, mostly because your computer's gone or the screen's gone or you replace it or something like that. And you can find a few hacks around on how to reuse these kind of things, particularly if they're working. Uh, it's turning them into, like, uh, photo frames, that sort of stuff. There's quite a lot of them. When they've really gone, then there's not that much you can do with them. Now, on the whole, they break because the lights in here break, and that's really what's gone. So you can replace the lights and reuse them then. But if it really is gone and really is broken, most people think that these are just worth throwing away. But I don't, because there's bits in here that we can use. So we're going to extract those bits. Obviously, first thing undo the case and all you do to do that is have a look on the back and find the screws that are holding it together there usually aren't that many of them if there isn't anything holding it together that you can see stick a screwdriver in the plastic there's a joint there and prise it apart the outer case flipped up with a screwdriver some screws holding this there are the electronic boards that's the control board that's the power board you can see that there's some control circuitry going there and here are the connections for the cold cathodes. They're the lights that I was talking about. This board's held on by a few screws, so undo it. Now, it can be worth saving this board, but definitely throw that one away. Okay, so undone the power board, disconnected it from the lights. There were screws in there. This is the back plate. The whole thing just lifts off. We don't want that either. This bit here is also the bit that we're looking for. Now, this is the bit that most people think that they can't use and they throw away. It's broken but it is actually in one piece. So it's not working as an LCD screen, but that glass isn't cracked and that's kind of cool. You can see the wires here going to the cold cathodes. So we're going to extract those and see if they actually work. This is the control board, which we also don't need. So we just get that out of the way. And then we take this bezel here and prise it off. And you might see there's a few screws holding the bezel. Undo those, prise that off. Behind here is a whole wreck of gear. Okay, so once you've got the front bezel off, that bit should just come out. You prise it off with a screwdriver. Now that's a bit of glass and it's relatively delicate, so you want to be careful with that. Make sure you don't crack it, because that's the bit we're really after. And then the other bits you're going to have in here are going to be hidden behind these plastic and bits. So we took the glass out because we can be a little as much as brutal as we like with this now. And you can just prise that off. Once you got rid of that bit of glass and it's safely away, you've priced off the plastic, you've got a whole load of stuff here. These are diffuser sheets. There's a um, Fren Fresnel lens there. There's this thing, which is a huge chunk of diffuser acrylic. And that is mightily useful stuff. So you put that to one side, because you're going to be able to use that for all kinds of projects. Look at the thickness on that. Here are the actual lights themselves, so that, that is the chance that those bits are gone. But we're going to save those bits anyway and give them a test. So just unhook the wires and take out those lamps and save those lamps. If we remove those polarising films, we get what looks like a sheet of glass that you can just see through. But that is in fact two sheets of glass. And what we need to do is separate them, because of course they're very delicately put together. But you can feel the step right there at that blue gel. So you lay them on a flat surface, make sure there's no dirt on the surface, and make sure that the surface isn't springy. So I'm using a little bit of MDF here. Then you get a knife blade clean up this blue gunk and do your best to get that knife blade in between those two pieces of glass. When it's in, run it around. So the trick with this is gentle. <laughs> Don't go at it like a mad thing. Just gently ease it in there and slide that blade around and those two bits of glass will separate as two whole pieces. So once you're going with around with your knife, carefully separate it It'll want to stick together because of the liquid crystal, but you'll end up with one clear sheet. 
and one darkened sheet and they will be conductive. We've got this on resistance. There we go. Less than 0.3 of an ohm. So when you've done, you'll basically end up with two panes of glass. One like this, which is pretty transparent, and this is the one with the colour filters on. Now it does have a light coating of polyamide on it, so you do need to remove that. But you can do that with a couple of 1200 grit wet and drying, and don't go at it crazy, just dust it over with that, and that will get rid of the polyamide, and then you'll have a conductive transparent sheet. The other one is actually much darker, this one here, and that's because that's the TFT side of it, so that's got all the transistors printed on it. Now it is darker and can be used, but it's not obviously as transmittant as this. Now granted, that's a lot of trouble to go to to get this stuff. Um, but there's a whole lot of gear you've got out of it. I mean, there's some lovely acrylic for building HHO generator cells, there's some nice lights, there's some good electronics, but this is the key thing. And the reason this is the key thing is because ITO is about $3 um, a an inch square, 25 millimeters square. It's around about two to three pounds or around about $3. Uh, and that makes this worth about 150 pounds to $200 if you had to buy it. So we've got that from scrap. So we've saved ourselves an awful lot of money by doing putting in that little effort. Now I've got really good at these, so I can strip one of these out in about 20 minutes or so. So for 20 minutes work, I get a ton of conductive glass that I can use in solar cell experiments, which is exactly what I plan on doing with it, without having to spend hundreds of pounds on ITO glass. So I thought I'd show you that because that is one of the things that's actually worth reclaiming out of a broken LCD screen, because we can reuse it to be able to do things like solar cells. Anyway, I thought I'd share that with you. I hope it was of interest and thank you very much for watching.